Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Small Steps by Louis Sakar. Uh, you might have heard of Louis Sakar as the author of Holes, and this is kind of a sequel of sorts. It doesn't follow Stanley Yelnats, who's the main character in Holes, it, but it does follow others like Armpit and uh, Armpit's friend X-Ray as well. I'm going to read you the blurb. Upon returning to Austin, Armpit set five goals for himself, five small steps. Graduate high school, get a job, save his money, avoid situations that might turn violent, and lose the name Armpit. In this wonderful, funny, and deeply satisfying novel by master storyteller Louis Sakar, Armpit finds all his small steps becoming much bigger than he had anticipated. When he gets mixed up with his old friend X-Ray in a ticket scam, things look set to unravel. But this is only the beginning of Armpit's troubles in a brilliant, fast-paced adventure story. Now, I really enjoyed Holes, and I really enjoyed this as well. I think there's just something about Sakar's writing style that's super, like, absorbing and enjoyable. I am going to go through and check out the little flags that I put throughout it as well. I will say, before I pick this up, just on the strength of Holes alone, I decided to add all of Sakar's books to, like, my wish list, and then... Like, I've been doing that over the last few weeks, updating that list, and so I hadn't actually got round to adding them all when I saw this in a charity shop and just had to get it. And this has just further cemented my view that I want to read all of his books. So I'm going to read you the opening paragraph, which I think this is great. Once again, Armpit was holding a shovel, only now he was getting paid for it, $7.65 an hour. He worked for Rain Creek Irrigation and Landscaping. He was in the process of digging a trench along the side yard of a house that belonged to the mayor of Austin, a woman with the unusual name of Cherry Lane. As his shovel knifed through the dirt, he carefully kept the sod intact so that it could be replaced later. His shovel was short and had a rectangular blade, unlike the five-foot shovels with pointed blades he had used when he was at Camp Green Lake Juvenile Correctional Facility. And I think that's great because it builds on the previous book, Holes, if you've read it, but equally it works by itself. So you don't need to have read the first book to read this book, you know? So X-Ray, Armpit's friend, comes up to him and has this prop proposition. He's like, how would you like to double your money? And uh, Armpit's like, I'm all right. I'd rather just work, save up, be an honest citizen, you know? And X-Ray's like, oh, no, no, it's nothing illegal. It's not against the law. I checked. And then uh, Armpit says, yeah, you didn't think selling little bags of parsley for $50 an ounce was against the law either. And X-Ray says, hey, it's not my fault what people think they're buying. How is that my fault? Am I supposed to be a mind reader? So that kind of gives you a really quick insight into what X-Ray is like as a character. So we have uh, Armpit as friends with his this little girl who lives next door called Ginny. And she has, I think it's uh, cerebral palsy she has. And um, they're talking about this pop star who's going to come into it a little bit more later. And uh, Ginny says, uh, she sings like I talk. How do you mean? And it's because she goes, her hands are sh sh shaking. Armpit laughed. You know, that's just part of the song, he said. Yes, but I, I like it. Which I think is very cute. At school, there's this girl called Tatiana who Armpit, you know, kind of has a little bit of a crush on. And she says to him, I hear you're going out for football next year. And he says, no, I just wanted Coach Simmons to think that. He gives better grades to football players. And then Tatiana says, so you lied to him. Isn't that kind of cheating? And then Armpit shrugs and says, thinks, how could it be cheating? It was unfair that the coach gave better grades to football players and he was just trying to even things out. Which is a fair point. So uh, this, this pop star is called Kyra and it's her gig that um, X-Ray and Armpit end up trying to sell these tickets to. And we have a bit where she's sort of backstage with her band and uh, they're listening to Janis Joplin. It says, uh, Janis Joplin's voice came over the speakers. Kyra hadn't heard her before, but she liked her right off. Her raspy voice seemed to drip emotion. There was a kind of raw energy to the music, not like the polished songs she sang in which every note was carefully planned and orchestrated. Now that's the way rock and roll is supposed to be, said Tim B, half sitting down, half falling onto the couch. And this kind of comes back into the story later and actually basically gets the band fired because, you know, Kyra is supposed to be this teenage pop star with a very polished image and she decides she wants to do uh, a little piece of my heart, I think. Some Janis Joplin song anyway. A little bit later, Kyra's uh, listening to Janis sing in the blues, her voice filled with suffering yet tenderness. Maybe we can meet Janis while we're in Texas, she said. Duncan and Tim B laughed. We'll all be meeting Janice someday, said Cotton, but it won't be in Texas. Janice had died of a drug overdose over 40 years ago. She was only 27 at the time. Hey Kyra, ever hear of the Beatles? asked Duncan. Who? asked Kyra. You got to be kidding me, said Duncan. You're kidding me, right? 
Kyra shrugged. She needs her musical education, but luckily her band gives that to her. I like this little line here about the, uh, the state capitol building with its dome and white columns. This was where the Texas Congress met. This was where the Texas Congress met, but only once every other year. This was where the Texas Congress met, but only every other year, so they couldn't cause too much damage. Sakar obviously knows politicians. And then we have this cute little nod back to the title. So small steps are, you know, Armpit wants to make small steps to almost re redefine who he is, to become the person he wants to be, you know? And this is very much like a coming of age story. But we also get the title referred to here where it says, um, Ginny tightly held Armpit's hand as they made their way to the building. She was so excited she would have fallen several times if he hadn't been holding her up. Small steps, he reminded her. So what's happening here is that Armpit kept a couple of the uh, tickets left over and decided to take Ginny. And uh, what happens, basically X-Ray has given them a couple of fake tickets because he wanted to sell all the tickets for more money. And um, because Armpit's black, basically, they don't give him the benefit of the doubt or anything like that. Um... So it goes here, they basically, the uh, security cards come up and some police officers have come over. And so it goes, what? Armpit exclaimed, reaching for the tickets. Let me see. An officer grabbed his arm and twisted it behind his back, spinning him around. And uh, luckily the, uh, the mayor comes along and the mayor knows him because obviously he's been working on the mayor's house. And then uh, Kyra basically invites them to go backstage, especially when it becomes clear that, you know, Ginny isn't isn't very well or isn't able-bodied or whatever the correct term is. In fact, what happens is that, um, yeah, here we go. The officer twisted Armpit's arm extra hard as he unlocked the handcuffs. The other officer was ready with his baton. Staying low, Armpit hurried to Ginny. Drool dripped from her mouth as her body writhed and twitched. Her eyes were, wo were wide open, but they weren't seeing anything. And uh, he wipes the drool off her face, adjusts her glasses, and... Um, just kind of holds her close and makes a little bit of space for them because she's just having um, a, a, like a small fit. And then we get to this sort of other element of the story. So after uh, the concert, uh, Armpit and Kyra kind of strike up this unlikely friendship and we discover what's going on in Kyra's life and uh, her stepfather's basically managing the business side of things but he's also kind of embezzling the money. And uh, he says here, Kyra had said many times that she planned to fire him when she turned 18. If that happened, then whoever took his place would certainly discover the embezzlement. However, if, for example, somebody like Billy Boy, armpit, killed Kyra before she turned 18, then her mother would inherit all her money. Jerome, her mother's husband, would continue to oversee all the financial matters. But Armpit doesn't know that this is necessarily going on. And by the way, when he goes back to, uh, back to work... Uh, he gets he gets X-ray a job under his real name, and uh, and so his boss says, in that case I'll make it seven dollars an hour. You guys are the fastest diggers because they met at Camp Green Lake and so they spent a summer digging holes every day. And then we get this awful scene, really, like not like badly written or anything like that, but where the stepfather is convincing Armpit to heft this baseball bat, and you as the reader know the reason he's doing that is because he wants to get the kid's fingerprints on this baseball bat so that he can then. Use it on his own stepdaughter and frame him. It's it's terrifying. An armpit is like very innocent at this point. He doesn't he doesn't have any clue any of this is going on. And then so he's gone to San Francisco to see Kyra, and they're in this coffee coffee shop. And she goes, "Isn't this place great? Beatniks used to read poetry and play bongos on that stage, which is like the most San Francisco thing I can think of." And then right, Kyra gets beaten up with a base with this baseball bat basically. So. Um, yeah, it, it, the bat caromed off her shoulder, then slammed against her throat. Uh, before she could even figure out what was happening, she was struck again, this time across her chest. And then the bat smashed against the back of her neck, just below the base of her skull. And I think she might get hit one or two more times as well. But she survives. She does well. Afterwards, as she's healing up, there was something wrong with her vocal cords as well. And she was only able to speak in a kind of raspy whisper. And I'm reading this thinking, oh my god, she's never going to be able to sing again. And it does say a little bit later, worse for Kyra than the loss of her money was the loss of her voice. The doctor said she might never be able to sing again. But then towards the end, she uh, she is able to sing again. And Armpit hears her on the radio. And uh, Sakar's written some lyrics here. and so. But I'm taking small steps because I don't know where I'm going. I'm taking small steps and I don't know what to stay. Small steps, trying to pull myself together, and maybe I'll discover a clue along the way. And there is actually like a full song's worth of lyrics there. I don't tend to like it when authors uh, do that, when they write song lyrics as part of the story. And I didn't particularly like it here, to be honest. But 
I understand why he did it. And for like a middle grade slash YA, I guess it is probably more middle grade book. Uh, yeah, it was really well done. I, I finished reading it and I couldn't really think of any reason to fault it. And I absolutely like loved the experience of reading it. So I gave it a 5 out of 5. And this will probably be one of my uh, top books of the quarter for sure. So definitely check it out, especially... If you're a fan of holes. So there we go. That's what I made of Small Steps by Louis Sackard. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book. And if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon after another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.